Hello and welcome to the Beam Channel. Today I wanted to talk about ETS, the Erlang Terminal Storage. There's also DETS, which is the disk-based version of the same thing. Well, we will stick to the memory-based thing. Let me say that if you're thinking about adopting Erlang or Elixir and like some expert guidance, please give me a shout. I do both mentoring and training courses and you will find a calendar link below. So as I said before, ETS is the Erlang term storage and it's an in-memory table-based system that stores Erlang and Elixir data structures. Now, by default, it wants tuples and old-style Erlang records. Maps do not work quite as well. It does not like maps, but you can work with that through a variety of different ways, including just storing a tuple at the top level and then maps underneath. Also should note that ETS and DETS are not distributed. They run on a single Erlang node. If you want something that is distributed, look at Manesia. I'll do a video about that soon. And it can handle a lot of those other things like distribution, locking, things like transactions that you might want. ETS is really the, under, the lower level thing, but it is still very useful. Secondly, you should note there's a maximum number of ETS tables you can have in a running Erlang instance. It's about 1400. You probably should never come across up, up against that limit, but you should just know what's there. Create an ETS table, the ETS new function. And you can, there's a bunch of options you can give it, you can tell it which fields have the index and you know, what type of records it has and all that good stuff. And you can also store both set data, which has unique indexes and bag data, which doesn't, and even duplicate bags, bags, which lets you have two identical records. And you can use pattern matching, we'll do get a future video on that, to do complex searches like you might do with SQL or even more so in an ETS table. And if you really want to get fancy, you can use Robert Verding's Erlog to do prolog logic queries over an ETS table. But that's way beyond the scope of this video. The other thing is, you should note, is ETS tables are linked to a process. And similarly to any other link, if your process dies, the ETS table dies. But there are some things you can do. So first of all, you can, you can tell it in an ETS table that when its process dies, it should transfer to a different process. Again, it can be part of your supervision strategy. And it'll get, and when that happens, you'll get a message in the other process that tells it, a tuple that tells it, hey, you've, got an, you've just inherited an ETS table and with relevant information. Furthermore, you should know that an ETS table can be private to its process. It can be protected, which means that only a given process can read, write to it, but anything can read. Or it can be public, where anything can do anything. Now, ETS writes are guaranteed to be atomic. That's good to know. Even if you insert multiple records at one go, it'll still be atomic. That is a bit about ETS. If you'd like more information, you can look and learn you some Erlang and lots of other online resources. And know that ETS is a really good way to store, say, cache data that will be stored in memory and will be very, very fast to look up and deal with. Really nice thing about ETS is ETS is very fast because it is an in-memory table. If you'd like to learn more, look through the through documentation and all the rest. And feel free to give me a call. I do training courses on Erlang and will happily add some more material on ETS if it's what you and your company need.